a colossal interstellar object, estimated to be a hundred times larger and brighter than 3 I Atlas, has been detected and is on a trajectory toward the Sun astronomers first spotted the object on September 12, 2025, using the Solar Wind Anisotropies SWAN, instrument aboard the SOHO spacecraft. Just two days later, Australian comet observer Michael Matiazzo captured an extraordinary image of it. The object's tail measures about two and a half degrees long, roughly equivalent to the apparent width of five full moons, eclipsing the tiny tail of three I Atlas. The International Astronomical Union has officially designated its C-slash-2025 R2 SWAN. Following its initial designation SWAN 25B, the discovery caused a sensation especially given the recent arrival of 3i Atlas. Scientists are now questioning the implications of two such anomalous visitors appearing nearly simultaneously. Could this be a coordinated mission, a probe and relay, or something entirely different? Initially, Avi Loeb and his team hypothesized that a two might have originated from 3i Atlas, perhaps as a splinter from a larger icy body, or even as a deployed scout craft from a distant technological vessel. However, senior collaborator Peter Vess confirmed a more unsettling reality. They approach from entirely different directions. Swan arrives from the constellation Aquarius, while 3 I Atlas comes from Sagittarius, near the Milky Way center, yet both are converging toward the Sun in almost the same time frame. The timing struck many as improbable. Each will make its closest solar approach in October 2025, nearly side by side in astronomical terms. Swan will pass about 150 million kilometers from the Sun, while 3 I Atlas will be at 203 million kilometers, a gap of only 50 million kilometers. Narrowing as speeds vary, adding to the mystery, both will slip behind the Sun simultaneously, vanishing from terrestrial telescopic observation, two interstellar arrivals, overlapping near-solar encounters, and an absence of visual monitoring leaves scientists uncertain about what might transpire. When placed side by side, 3 I Atlas appears like a drone in comparison to SWAN, our 2's battleship scale magnitude. Spectroscopy of 3 I Atlas has already shocked researchers. It is composed of solid nickel without iron, a material blend typically seen only in advanced manufacturing, not in natural cosmic bodies. Internal sensors detected a nuclear reactor outputting 10 gigawatts, and the tail behaved like a propulsion stream rather than sublimating ice emitting tightly collimated carbon dioxide at a constant rate, an impossible pattern for any conventional comet. As it neared the sun, its exhaust shifted from red to green exactly when its trajectory altered, a phenomenon lobe described as thrust mix modulation, indicative of propulsion adjustment in response to heating. While three I Atlas raised alarms, Swan or two proved even more formidable. Loeb's team discovers silver plasma shield encasing a nickel-cobalt armored hull, vastly larger than that of 3 I Atlas. This is not merely defensive shielding, but an active electromagnetic barrier of immense energy, capable of deflecting solar wind and radiation more effectively than any solid armor could. Its tail spans two degrees of sky, roughly five full moons across, making it about a hundred times bigger than 3 I Atlas's plume. Near perihelion, Swan brightened and shifted to a white-green hue precisely as Loeb's instruments recorded faint plasma thrust pulses, suggesting a high-precision plasma drive. Its exhaust contained nickel-cobalt-iron plasma mixed with carbon dioxide and carbon monoxide, characteristics Loeb considers impossible without a directed plasma engine. Yet the most staggering revelation lay in its core. While three I Atlas's reactor already astonished with 10 gigawatts, 50 times Chernobyl's output, Swan's plasma core generates over 10. 000 gigawatts per second, which Loeb likened to the scaled and contained energy of two colliding black holes. In Loeb's assessment, 3 I Atlas was merely a scout, while Swan R2 is a fortress, an immensely powered nickel cobalt plasma vessel. Subsequent orbital analysis by NASA and JPL revealed Swan R2's astounding periodicity. It revisits the Sun every 22. 554 years, indicating that its presence is not a one-off event, but a regular occurrence across time spans extending well beyond recorded human history. Its closest solar approach will occur in October, coinciding almost exactly with 3 
I, Atlas's own perihelion. Two anomalous crafts passing near the sun within days, one on a hyperbolic course, the other bound on a 22. Zero, zero, zero year path prompted Loeb to ask not whether they were the same object, but whether they functioned as part of a system. His conclusion is that Swan R2 is no natural comet, but an autonomous construct dispatched by a civilization far older than humanity. For such beings, a 22. Zero, zero, zero year orbital cycle might feel like routine patrol, with relativistic speeds compressing time so that millennia four Earth equate to mere months for the travelers. In this interpretation, Swan R2's return is no coincidence, it's a scheduled event. But what kind of purpose would justify such an immense timescale? In Abby Loeb's view, each close pass could represent a planned maintenance cycle, designed to harvest superheated plasma from the sun for refueling, recalibrate enormous sensor arrays hidden across planets, or retrieve data from covert outposts buried within the asteroid belt, beneath polar ice sheets, or embedded deep in planetary crusts. It may also serve as park spacecraft, refresh navigational markers, or update stellar databases. The sun could serve as both a power station and a navigational beacon. And a 22, 000, year orbital interval provides sufficient time for new data to accumulate before the next scheduled visit. To such an ancient intelligence, what appears to humanity as a cosmic mystery might simply be a routine service stop, a mission to refuel, recalibrate, gather data, and continue on a cycle older than civilization itself. Another possibility Loeb mentions is that Swan or Two's arrival could be directly related to Three I Atlas. If Atlas represents a reconnaissance craft, Swan might be the heavy hauler arriving to collect its information retrieve its reactor core, or even dismantle it before humanity can examine it too closely. Some theorists even propose that these two objects might belong to opposing factions from an ancient interstellar conflict, competing probes meeting near our sun to secure a critical cosmic resource. To them, the sun's radiation, magnetic power, and gravity could serve essential roles in stabilizing wormholes or energizing a vast galactic network what humanity perceives as ordinary sunlight. They might recognize as raw fuel. Archaeologist Graham Hancock offers an even more thought-provoking angle. He points out that the last recorded appearance of Swan, R2, roughly 22, 000, 000 years ago, coincided with the end of the last ice age, the same epoch when early humans began designing monolithic architecture and primitive star maps. The Great Pyramid, the aligned stones of Giza, and shafts aimed at Orion may all echo awareness of this celestial cycle. According to this hypothesis, ancient civilizations may have observed the return of Swan, R2, or similar bodies, and encoded their appearances within monumental architecture, the pyramid shafts tracking Orion's belt, the ancient calendars aligned with precession, and the early fascination with the sun could all stem from encoded warnings or messages inherited from those who witnessed a previous passage. This might explain the extraordinary precision of ancient construction, the abrupt emergence of agriculture and geometry, and the deep solar symbolism in early cultures. If Swan R2 has maintained its orbital cycle for tens of millennia, those ancient builders may have literally watched its blazing form traverse the sky, its tail stretching five moons wide, and immortalize the vision in stone. However, Loeb challenges Hancock's interpretation, posing the more pressing question, why now, after thousands of years of quiet, we've suddenly recorded three unexplained interstellar visitors within just a few years, Oumuamua, 3 I Atlas, and now Swan R2. Loeb argues this timing is unlikely to be random, but rather a reaction to us. For over 50 years, humanity has been broadcasting radio and television waves, radar signals, the Arecibo message, and the Voyager Golden Records outward into space forming an ever-expanding bubble of electromagnetic presence. By this point, those signals have reached multiple nearby star systems. In Loeb's theory, that expanding sphere of noise might have finally contacted intelligent receivers, whose subsequent responses arrived as a sequence of probes. First came Oumuamua in 2017, a silent, dark scout. Then three, I Atlas, a nickel-based probe powered by a nuclear reactor. Now Swan R2, 
a luminous plasma fortress generating energy outputs akin to scale black hole collisions. To Loeb, this progression is no accident. Our own transmissions might have awakened a dormant network or reactivated an ancient system observing emerging civilizations. What we interpret as comets could in fact be engineered sentinels evaluating a planet that has just begun to announce its presence. Humanity's golden record was meant as a greeting. Swan R2 could be the reply. Its pending reappearance from behind the sun is a sobering reminder of how limited our observational capabilities remain and how easily something incredible can drift through the inner solar system unseen until it's suddenly upon us. What's remarkable is not only the nature of these objects, but also the profound silence surrounding their discovery. No government, no major space agency, in either the United States or Europe, has treated these sightings as a matter demanding public attention. Official channels remain restrained, perhaps intentionally, yet the universe itself does not keep quiet. Swan R2 and 3 I Atlas do not seem like mere comets, they appear as messages. They challenge our assumptions, demand new conceptual frameworks, and may even redefine humanity's place in the cosmos. It feels as though an ancient narrative is beginning anew, signs filling the heavens while the world below looks away. Ignoring such omens risks, missing their meaning. The universe speaks, whether we choose to listen or not. So, what seems more plausible to you? A scheduled maintenance operation, an ancient surveillance network, or a direct response to our own cosmic broadcasts? Share your thoughts below. And remember to like and subscribe for more explorations into the mysteries of deep space.